Hello and welcome to the British Wheelchair Basketball Women's League Highlights Show. My name's Stephen Jameson. And I'm Jude Handley. After an amazing first weekend's competition, we're excited to be back for week number two. We certainly are. We're back here at the Wildcats Arena and it's time for the action to get underway. So let's take a look at what's coming up on the show. So on that evidence, we've got a really exciting show coming up for you this week. So why don't you act like us, get yourselves comfortable, strap yourselves in. But if you're new to the sport of wheelchair basketball, here's all you need to know to find out more. Wheelchair basketball is similar to basketball in many ways. The court size and hoop height are identical, as is the scoring system. Two for a basket and three for a long shot beyond the three-point line. The rules are largely similar too, although travelling works slightly differently in this sport, with players only allowed to propel themselves forward in their chair twice without bouncing the ball. This sport is non-contact too, although chair-to-chair -chair contact is expected and allowed within reason. This sport is inclusive and caters for absolutely everyone, so a system is in place to balance the teams. Each player is individually classified according to their functional ability on a scale of 1 to 5 and teams are only permitted a set total on the court at any one time. The league is divided into three divisions. Division 1 contains five teams, Division 2 contains four and, brand new this year, Division 3 contains two pools of four teams. The divisions will end their seasons with the playoffs which will determine their champions. Now we know everything we need to know about the sport, let's get the action underway. Yeah, we start with the Division 1 and it's the early pace setters, the Vixens, taking on CWBA. Away we go then for the Division 1 highlights and despite coming into this game as the underdog, CWBA started brilliantly against the unbeaten Vixens, with Jude Hamer's first appearance of the season coming with a stellar performance. You can never rule out the Vixens though as this move proved, but CWBA were on fire in this one, Shiv Fitzpatrick here for two more, and the Whites took it, 48-36. The Titans were up next, up against an Angels team that are starting to get to grips with life in Division 1. The team in white made a flying start with a lovely basket from Catherine Eason before Robin Love teed up Laurie Williams for this score. This was a very close game though and Pauline McDonald kept the Titans in contention but in the end it was the Angels who edged it, 51-48. Next up we have a rerun of last year's final as the Steelers took on the holders, Vixens. The Sheffield side started well in their quest to avenge that defeat as captain Joanne Harper swept up this rebound. Vixens responding here with one of their trademark breakaways as Amy Conroy played in Claire Griffiths. But in Maddie Thompson, the Steelers had the difference as she claimed two more of her 27 points to take it 63-59. The CWBA were back in action next against the Angels. Both were looking to add to their brilliant wins earlier on in the day and Jude Hamer was again in sensational form, scoring here on her way to a whopping 37 points. The Angels once again had Laurie Williams to thank for her scoring prowess but Jude Hamer again notched to bring it home for the CWBA, 59-44. The Coventry side were back in action early on the Sunday against the Titans and once again looked in fine fettle with Shiv Fitzpatrick helping herself to two here. The CWBA's number 15 was at it again not long after as they continued to stretch their lead. Louise Sugden helped the Titans claw back but it wasn't enough for the London side as they went down 63-45. Three out of three for the CWBA and Jude Hamer was delighted. All right, so dude, you just got off the court against the Titans. 29 points in your game. That's not a bad performance to bow out the weekend on. No. Um, yeah, it was kind of, it was a, yeah, everyone's a bit tired. So we had two quite tough games yesterday playing Vixens. They're a really tough um, team. So today was a bit slower maybe than we'd have liked. But yeah, it was a good team performance. Everybody yeah, contributed. I think everyone got a lot of confidence from this weekend. Everyone shot quite well. So yeah, it was nice. Yeah, plenty of reasons to be confident. Three wins out of three this weekend, being pretty much everyone you could. And does that show where you're going this season? Yeah, definitely. I think um, the team's really positive, really supportive. Uh, it's my first season with them, my first weekend with them, so I was a bit nervous to see how we gel, but um, yeah, everybody works really well for each other. So, yeah, I'm feeling really confident about the rest of the season. Where do you think you can go? Obviously, CWA in the lower reaches of the division last season, obviously shooting higher at the league this season, do you think you can go all the way? Yeah, I think we can take a lot of confidence from this weekend. I think they had good results last time when I wasn't here as well. Um, so yeah, I think we can be pushing for the, for the championship. 
The Titans followed that with a game against the Vixens, with both teams in the rare position of facing a weekend without a win. Vixens captain Claire Griffiths was in no mood to see that continue though, and the number six continued a fine performance with this basket. Pauline McDonald was again one of the Titans' best outlets, but it was the Vixens who were to bounce back, taking it 64-33. The Steelers were back in action against the Angels in our final Division 1 game of the weekend and the Sheffield side were looking to make it 2 out of 2 and Matty Thompson was going the right way about doing that here. The Angels remained in the game throughout though and with players like Robin Love in the team that should be no great surprise. But more Maddie Magic put the Steelers out of sight and they took it 52-39. And the CWBA have every right to be happy as their fantastic weekend sees them top the pile with one weekend to go. After an imperious first week, the Vixens have loosened their grip on top spot, but they'll be hoping to bounce back next time around. While the Steelers and the Angels are level on points in third and fourth with the same points and head-to-head -head record. The Steelers are only above the Angels in the north after their win over the Angels was by more points than the Angels' victory over the Steelers. It doesn't get much closer than that. The Titans, meanwhile, have work to do. So what a way to start the show. Division 1 providing us with some amazing action to kick us off. But next up is Division 2. What have they got in their locker? Let's take a look at all the highlights. The Blackhawks came into this weekend in fine form after an excellent showing in round 1. First up for them was the Angels 2, who were no match for the Blackhawks scoring power. This basket from Miriam Hazelden helping set the Blackhawks on their way. And Ashley Greening also chipped in with a couple of points here too. The Angels did have their moments like this through Nescal Braith, but the Blackhawks cruise home 48-14. Our second game sees the Steelers 2 take on the Titans 2, and in a tight game, Katie Morrow's scoring power was making a difference here, but Tony Cave of the Titans was helping them battle their way back into the game courtesy of efforts like this. But the Titans couldn't quite catch the Steelers up, and in the end the Sheffield side took the win 40-30. The Steelers too were back in action in our next game against the form team, Blackhawks. This was the definition of a game of two halves, as Helen McGiven helped give the Blackhawks a 30-17 half-time lead. But the Steelers too came out a different team in the second half, and through Katie Morrow's 28-point game, took the lead in the fourth quarter. The Steelers too fended off a late rally to gain a crucial victory, 42-40. The Blackhawks returned on the Sunday determined to put that result behind them, but had the Angels too in their way. Rosie Williams was only on court for a little over a quarter, but the number 16 was in fantastic form, firing in 17 points to help the Blackhawks build an unassailable lead by half time. The second half was closer as the Angels threatened a comeback, but the Blackhawks saw it through 48-22. The Blackhawks then faced their third and final game of the weekend as they and the Steelers too met again. After an extremely tight game previously, this time around the Sheffield side were dominant as the Blackhawks offence never really got going. Gabby down there putting up points, while Katie Morrow was deadly from the free throw line. The Blackhawks did have their moments, but the Steelers 2 eventually won through, 56-28. The final game of the Division 2 weekend between the Titans and the Angels saw some great action. First that from Tony Cave, but check out this from Ness Galbraith. The Angels player banking one in blind with their unorthodox technique. The Titans didn't let that distract them though as this score from Joanna Burley helped them to a 34-19 win and afterwards I caught up with Coach Anne Wilde. Alright so Anne, that's the end of the Titans action this weekend. Are you happy with how your weekend's gone? I think it's been mixed fortunes for us this weekend. Uh, a couple of losses and a good final win for our second division team. Um, it's been tough, it's been really really hard for them. A strong learning curve for them because we've got, yeah, we've got our biggest numbers as we've ever had so far this season. So um, yeah, we've got a, a lot of things to work on, definitely. But a lot of positives as well, as you said you won your last game. What was the secret to, uh, to getting that victory? I think by the time we spent a bit more time together, we had the opportunity of formulating our offence a little bit uh, more, with a bit more form really. Um, I think that we've come together as a team more, we certainly you know, socialised a little bit more, which is what these weekends are about a little bit as well. So we had a lot of fun this weekend as well. And speaking of having a lot of fun, you've been taking part in the, or coaching rather, at the development sessions over this weekend. They were sold out once again. Is it just to show the interest that's around the game at the minute and how much do they benefit the sport as a whole? Do you know what? It's amazing to see these development sessions and they've really taken off and we've had huge numbers and what we've seen is a fantastic improvement from each development session to the next and there's been this exponential growth within them which has been superb to see and I think the growth of the women's game is really rocketing on now and I think with the support of the BWB it's been something that you know can only go further and further from this point on. 
And speaking of going further and further, how far can the Titans 2 team go this year? Titans 2, they have all the ability to go, go as far as they want to. You know, it's really down to my players. We, we put the formulations in place to help them to get the, the, to where they want to be. But it's just a question of them actually applying those directives now. So we'll see if they can do with the jobs that I asked them to. And then we'll go from there. <laughs> And that win sees the Titans move into striking distance of the table topping Blackhawks as the Londoners are two points behind with a game in hand. The Blackhawks versus Titans game in Weekend 3 now takes on extra significance. The Angels too have enjoyed a solid weekend as well in third place, while the Steelers too are breathing down their necks after some fine results. Before we move on with the rest of the show, just time for an exciting announcement. After the phenomenal success of last season's extravaganza, the Women's League All-Star Game returns. On the 28th of February 2016, the Women's League All-Star Game returns to the Wildcats Arena with the finest players from across the Women's League putting on a show to end the season in style. Tickets are on sale now at the link on screen, priced at just £2 for adults and £1 for kids. It was a sellout last year, so make sure you book now so you don't miss the show. But the action doesn't stop just yet as the Division 3 season continues to entertain us. Here's the roundup. We kick off the roundup of Division 3 with Pool A and the Angels 4. The team in pink struggled to break down the Eastern Blue Stars in their first match, but they were absolutely delighted with this basket against the Stallions in their second. Eventually, though, the Angels succumbed to a second valiant defeat. The Blue Stars enjoyed a decent weekend, kicking it off with a great victory versus the Angels of the North 4, putting up a 31-point margin. They couldn't follow that form into their next game against the Spitfires, however, as they struggled to get the better of the Stokes side's offence, despite some nice moments. A solid weekend then, for the Blue Stars. The Spitfires battled against the Stallions first up, and despite these two superb baskets from the Stokies on Court 3, the Spitfires fell agonisingly short by just two points. They were straight back into another tough game on the Sunday versus the Eastern Blue Stars, and this time around the Spitfires dominated the game, taking it by a full 22 points. After starting Women's League life with two wins out of two, the Stallions maintained their 100% record in this round, first knocking over the Spitfires in a close encounter, before dispatching the Angels 4 by 30 points in their second and final game of the weekend. Not a bad start to Women's League life for the Green Machine. Moving into Pool B and first in focus to the London All-Stars. After losing both games in Weekend 1, the All-Stars had clearly been putting in the practice as they notched their first Women's League victory over the Angels 3, even if sometimes the ball refused to drop for them. After a defeat by the Bisons, they took on the Bears and ran them very close as the much-improved Londoners lost by a single point. The Angels 3, led by Anna Jackson, entered the weekend with a close opener with the All-Stars. After losing by 7, the Angels looked to set that right in their next two games, but after running the Bears all the way to overtime only to be edged out by 5 points, the Angels then came up short against the group leaders, the Bisons. Three good performances, but unfortunately for the Angels, three defeats. The Bears were hoping the extra shooting practice would pay off ahead of their first game against the Angels 3, and it certainly did when it mattered the most. After an exceptionally close game went all the way into overtime, the Bears rallied, sealing the win by 5 points. They might just have liked that thrill, as they edged their second game the weekend versus All-Stars by a single point to make it 2 out of 2. Just. Much like the Stallions in Pool A, the Bisons have taken to women's league life like a duck to water, and they look to continue their 100% record this weekend. The Bristol team kicked off with a very solid win over the All-Stars, notching 49 points in the process. They went one point better in their game versus Angels, racking up half a century and leaving the Bisons and coach Hugh Sheffield beaming. All right then, so Hugh, brand new to the league this year for the Bristol Bisons. How much are you enjoying it so far? The experience has been superb. It's real good. The team's playing really well. Good results. The team's doing what we want them to do. So, yeah. And your first year coaching as well, how are you finding that? Are you enjoying the role? Yeah, it's, really, it's been really weird, but yeah, it's a good experience. And what do you expect towards the end of the season now? We're a couple of weeks into it, final week coming up soon. Are you hoping to top the table? I want, to, I want the two more wins, so yeah. Wish you all the best with that. Thank you very much. 
The Stallions are riding high in Pool A, and the Women's League debutants have retained their 100% record, and will look to maintain that all the way through to the end of the Division 3 campaign. The Spitfires remain in touch in second place, while the Blue Stars are fending off the challenge of the Angels 4 in fourth. The Bisons too have a 100% record to defend and the Bears are lying in wait to pounce should they slip up next time around. The Angels 3 and All-Stars are separated by just 4 points in a head-to-head -head record in 3rd and 4th and will both be fighting to end Week 3 in Position 3. So that'll just about do us here in a very snowy Nottingham for another weekend of thrilling Women's League action. We've had a great weekend and we can't wait to do it all again in February. We certainly can't, but if you can't wait until February to get your wheelchair basketball fix, then make sure you check out the website, britishwheelchairbasketball.co.uk. From me and Jude, though, until February, it's goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>